What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Boar, checking out the brand new Galaxy Note 7. This is Samsung's most important flagship phone of the year and brings a lot of new features and a great new design. So the Note 7 really picks up on most of the specs and designs of the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge and kind of combines them together while retaining the S Pen stylus. So this brings a bunch of new features to the Note series, such as a curved edge to the display, which narrows the grip of the phone. We also get water resistance for the first time on the Note series. New is an iris scanner. This is the first for any smartphone and it works surprisingly well. And for the first time, Samsung has added a USB-C connector. So getting to the box, some very nice details here. You'll see the S Pen sort of embossed on the side and along the back, you'll find all the specs for the phone. So we will have to crack into the seal to open up the box. And once you open up the box inside, you'll find this really nice blue color, which is a great compliment to the coral blue phone I have here. So I wanna save the best for last. So let's set the Note 7 aside and get all of the accessories out of the way. And there's quite a bit of them. First up underneath the phone, is a box containing our paperwork and a SIM ejection tool. And of course, this will vary depending on which carrier you pick up your phone from. Next up, we get a set of headphones from Samsung. This is a familiar design with an in-ear style, which includes an inline remote control and microphone and swappable ear tips. And it does come in this nice carrying case. Also included is Samsung's adaptive fast charging system. So this works with the included USB-C cable. Now, because we have USB-C and tons of Samsung accessories that use micro USB, they have included two adaptive adapters, which work with all of those accessories. And as always, we get a set of replacement pen nibs for the S Pen and a removal and installation tool. And finally, let's get to the phone wrapped in plastic so we can go ahead and peel all this off. Now this is the coral blue color. It's also available in titanium, gold, or Onyx Black. So next up, let's take a close look at the hardware design and it's really stunning, especially in this contrasting gold and blue color. Now, of course, the display is a big story here because it curves around the edges and that definitely provides a nice narrow grip. And because the phone is so rounded, the phone feels fantastic and the hand feels nothing like the previous notes you've had, which felt more chunky or more boxy. This feels a lot more like a conventional smartphone like the Galaxy S7. So once again, built into the back of this phone is fast wireless charging in addition to Android Pay, NFC, as well as Samsung Pay and all those features that we've seen before. The camera system is the same one from the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. So that's 12 megapixels with an f1.7 aperture with face detection, autofocus, optical image stabilization, and an LED flash. Also next to that LED flash is a heart rate monitor, which is used with Samsung Health. So along the edge of the phone, you won't find any of those chamfers, just a smooth continuous surface matching the glass and metal frame. So along the right side, we'll find a power button. Along the left side, we'll find our volume controls. Along the top of the phone, we'll find a micro SD card slot and nano SIM tray. So SD has finally returned to the Note series with this generation. Now, if you look at the tray itself, it does have a gasket around it. That's part of the waterproofing. Now, unfortunately, the Note 7 does not support adoptable storage. So you cannot use the SD card to expand internal storage, but you do get 64 gigs standard. Along the bottom edge, we still have our headphone jack, a USB-C connector, which again is a first for a Samsung phone. We also have our single loudspeaker, which is waterproofed with this generation. And just like the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge speaker, which is also waterproof, it sounds about the same, which is to say it doesn't sound very good. It's a little tinny. And for some reason, voices sound very robotic as if the audio is over-processed on this phone. And of course, we have our S Pen stylus, which has been color matched to the design of this phone. And it's really nice. Now, just like the previous generation, the S Pen is ejected by pressing on the button and pulling it out. And this time it can't be inserted incorrectly. So it will block you from inserting it backwards. So that issue is now resolved. So for the most part, the S Pen design is very similar to the previous generation, but it is a little shorter and the S Pen nib is definitely narrower. And the other nice tweak here is that the button along the side now acts as an eraser. So if you want to erase whatever you've written, just hold the button down. And of course the S Pen stylus itself is also waterproof. So you can use this underwater. So getting to my favorite part of this phone and that is the display. This is a 5.7 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display with an adaptive brightness setting that can boost the brightness of the display to over 1000 nits in bright sunlight conditions. And it definitely works. So if you take this outside and cover up the sensor in a bright sunlight day, and then take your hand off it, you can see it respond very noticeably. So this is a great phone outdoors in terms of visibility. Down below, returning once again, is Samsung's fingerprint scanner, which is a little slow on this device. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe software updates will improve this in the future, but it's definitely slower than other competing flag 
flagship smartphones. And of course, once again, we have our backlit Android navigation keys. Now toward the top of the phone, we also get some new features, but of course we get some old ones as well, including an earpiece, which is now waterproof. It could be a little louder, but it's a decent sounding earpiece nonetheless. We also get a very wide angle, five megapixel quad HD camera with an F1.7 aperture. Definitely one of the best front facing cameras you can get today. And it's basically the same one that's also on the Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge. A new system up here is the iris scanner and that combines an infrared light to light your face and a separate camera for reading your irises. Now this technology actually works extremely well, although it's not as reliable as a fingerprint scanner. Now this works basically the same way as a fingerprint scanner, but instead of just holding your finger to the home button, you actually have to swipe up on the lock screen. So you have to wake up the lock screen, swipe up, and then it scans for your face. And if it can't see your face right away, it'll actually give you a display showing you your face in relation to the camera. Uh, so then you line up your eyes to the iris scanner. Now for the most part, this works very well. Now because I wear glasses, I really don't use this feature at all because it's just not reliable enough. But if you're outdoors and it's cold and you're wearing gloves, I definitely see where this feature is useful, especially where I live. The good news here is that you can use both the iris scanner and the fingerprint scanner simultaneously. So you can choose one or the other. So I don't think there's any harm in setting up the iris scanner, even if you don't plan to use it very frequently. So as I mentioned earlier, this is the first note to be IP68 certified, like a lot of Samsung devices. So that means it's dust proof and water resistant up to 1.5 meters at 30 minutes. So don't take it swimming, but it is splash and submersion resistant. So when it comes to our specs, the Note 7 gets four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of onboard storage. But when it comes to our CPUs, things get a little complicated and that's because we have two options depending on where you are in the world. So in the US, most of the phones are coming with a Snapdragon 820 with an Adreno 530 GPU. In other parts of the world, you're getting the Samsung Exynos 8890 octa-core processor with a Mali T880 GPU. So for the most part, the Adreno 530 on the Snapdragon is better for graphics and gaming performance, while the Exynos seems to have an edge on overall CPU speed. So for the most part, both phones are definitely very powerful. And in my case, because I have the Snapdragon 820, which is pretty standard for 2016 flagship smartphones, we get pretty predictable Geekbench scores, which is on the high end today, but definitely not breaking any new ground. So when it comes to day-to-day -day performance, I think most people are gonna be very satisfied with it because it's a very smooth operating phone and it's able to handle all of its features really well. But if you're used to a near stock Android experience without all of these features, it definitely doesn't feel as fast, especially when loading apps or loading some of the features or navigating around the interface. It just doesn't feel as quick and snappy as I would like to see. The Note 7 is packing a fairly large battery, 3,500 versus 3,000 from the Note 5. So that's a pretty big jump. So in terms of battery life, I'm seeing about six hours of on-screen time at maximum brightness. That's about an hour better than the typical smartphone, which usually does around five hours at best. In terms of the camera's quality, this is one of the best cameras I've tested on a smartphone to date. It's quick to launch, quick to focus, and quick to snap a photograph. It's always ready to go and produces outstanding images in a variety of lighting conditions. Images find focus accurately with crisp detail and balanced exposure, so the camera doesn't wash out highlights or underexpose shadows. With such a wide aperture, the camera really does produce some of the most professional photos I've seen in a smartphone without obvious overprocessing or softening. The camera does have a very shallow depth of field, which creates beautiful images, but also means you have to spend more time monitoring your focus points to make sure you're focusing on what you want. Low light is where the camera really stands out with excellent detail and exposure while preserving color and saturation, which is where most smartphone cameras struggle. Video quality is also outstanding on this phone with optical image stabilization and high bitrate 4K video recording. So you're able to achieve some of the best looking 4K video you can get on a smartphone today. We do have continuous autofocusing on this camera and it's really smooth and inobtrusive. So you don't have the hunting around like you typically see with these large aperture lenses. So that makes handheld 4K video on this phone really outstanding. So digging into the software, of course, there's a lot going on with a Samsung phone and that starts right on the lock screen. So we have our always on display, which is currently showing my date and time and battery status in addition to my notification badges. So if I wanna access those, I just double tap and then I have to unlock my phone. I can use whatever method I prefer here. So this takes me right to the app that's pushing the notification. And of course, if you wanna see more, just double tap on those notifications and expands it out. But you notice there is another icon here and that is a note. So this allows us to pin notes right to the lock screen. This works with the S Pen. So if I eject the S Pen, I can jot a note down right on the lock screen without leaving it. So let me just do what I just did, which is test, draw a little doodle there, click pin, and this will save it to the lock screen. So if I go back to the lock screen, just double tap it, 
and I have quick access to it without unlocking the device. And of course, you can save this to your Notes app as well, so it's always there. Now, of course, this screen is highly customizable, and you can see that it acts as a screensaver, so it moves around on the screen so it doesn't burn in. So we're going to have to go to Settings to customize this. Go to our settings from drop down, and if you go to your display settings, we have our always on display, which you can turn on and off. So if we turn this on and take a look at our layouts, you can see all the layouts that are available. So you get different clocks. If you're on a dual clock setup, you can pick that, and you can customize these layouts as well. So for example, let me go with the default layout here. We can change the color. So if you want to change the color of the clock, you can do that as well. And if you want to change the background, you can add that as well. So let's go and change this background, click apply. And now if you go to the lock screen, you can see the always on display is a lot more colorful. There's a few other things you can do here as well. So if you want to turn off your notifications so you don't see them on the lock screen, you can do that as well. You can also change the content that's displayed if you want your calendar or if you just want an image. So if you like one of those wallpapers that we've seen before, you can apply that as well. You won't see anything else besides that wallpaper though. You can also schedule this. So this is only on during certain parts of the day. So if you don't want this on at night, you can schedule this for start and end time. Now in terms of the lock screen, we can also quickly launch into our phone or the camera app or expand out our notifications. And again, this is also modifiable under settings. So if you go to settings here, go to our lock screen, and then we can change our info and app shortcut. So if you want a dual clock, you can turn that on. If you want to add your owner information, you can do that or change the app shortcuts. So if you want to change the left or right shortcut, you can pick from any app you want. Another feature appearing for the first time on the Note 7 is the Edge screen. So you can invoke it by swiping across on the tab along the side, which you can reposition here. So in terms of these Edge screens, right now I have the People Edge, Task Edge, my news edge, the weather, and the apps edge. And I can also tap on these icons down here to quickly jump right to them. So this allows me to quickly access things like the YouTube app, and that's all accessible from anywhere in the system interface. So for example, if I'm within an app, this is still available to me. So I can swipe in here to access, for example, the calculator app. So it takes me right to it. Now, of course, this is highly customizable. We can go to our settings here, and we can go up to the handle settings to reposition this handle. So I can change the location along the side where this is, or I can switch to the left side if I want. I can change the transparency or the size of the handle as well from medium to small. Now, of course, you can also just turn this off if you don't want this on at all, and you can add or remove some of these edge screens. So a lot of them come pre-installed, and you can go ahead and select them if you want. Some of them you can edit as well. So for example, with the Apps Edge, I can go to Edit and change the apps that appear on the Apps Edge. You can also download additional ones from the App Store. Some of them are paid, some of them are free, and there's a huge selection of them now. Now, one of my favorites is the People Edge. So this allows me to quickly access my favorite contacts for calling them or sending them a message. The other thing here is that each person gets its own color. So if your phone is laying face down and you're receiving a phone call or a message, the edge of the screen will light up and strobe in that color to let you know that that person is calling. And if you miss a phone call or a message from one of those contacts, you get this little color match tab along the side, which you can swipe in on to see the information. The edge screen can also be used on the lock screen, and we have something called edge feed. So if you rub the side of the phone, this will invoke edge feeds. This will reorientate depending on how you're holding the phone, and this works on both sides of the phone. So if you want it on the left side, you just have to rub the left side to get to it. Now, this you can cycle through, so you can swipe across them to navigate through those edge feeds. So I have my notifications, and I have my news feed. Now, you can customize this under settings. So if you go to settings here and go to display, we have our edge screen. So this is our edge screen setting. So this allows us to turn off the edge screen entirely if we don't want it. And then we have our edge feeds, which you can also turn off. Now, of course, you can reorder these if you want, and you can change the timeout here from 15 seconds all the way up to 10 minutes. Now, I think a little more useful is the night clock. So if we go to the night clock, we can turn this on, and this is something we can schedule. So I've set this for 12 p.m. so we can take a look at it right now, and you can change the position of it from left or right side. Now, when this is turned on, you get this very dim clock along the side, which also turns off the always on display, and you can see your battery status in addition to the date and time. So the big news with any Note phone is the S Pen stylus. So as soon as they eject it, we get this air command utility that pops up. So this has a lot of our S Pen features, and you can can hide it away or bring it forward just by tapping the icon. Now we have lots of settings here, including that floating icon. So if you want to turn this off, you can, and if you want to re-invoke it, you just press the button along the side to bring it up again. So one of the S Pen utilities is the new Notes app. So this has been expanded with a lot of features like voice memo, but what I'm going to show you is the S Pen toolbox. So we have different pen tips or pencil tips, marker tips, or whatever, and you can select them. Uh, and then we can also choose a different color, or we can go to the color wheel and select something else and change the intensity. So let's click Done here, click Close, and we can start writing our message. 
So as you write, you actually get some auditory feedback as if you're writing on actual paper, which is kind of neat. Now, one of the most talked about features is translate. So right now I'm on the German website. If I hover my pen tip over a word, this will translate that word for me. And I can go up here to have it speak the word to me. So let's try another word here. Gelten, be valid. Next up, under Smart Select, we have this new animated GIF option. So this allows us to actually record GIFs on the video. It doesn't have to be video, it could be anything, but it makes most sense with video. So for example, I have my YouTube video up here. I can record in high quality or standard quality. If I click play on that video here, I can go ahead and start recording this. And this will record up to 15 seconds for the GIF, and of course I can stop it before that. So we're gonna click stop there. This will save it, you can see the playback here. We also get magnify, which is pretty self-explanatory. Basically, it's a magnifying glass and you can change the intensity here. So you can go from 150 to 300 percent. Another interesting feature is glance. So this will minimize the window you're currently looking at so you can do other things. So it keeps it in the corner and you can move it around. And if you want to glance back to it, just hover your cursor over that window. Now, of course, with the S Pen, you do get a handwriting keyboard built in. You just have to select it. So if you click and hold on this option key down here, which can either be the voice keyboard, the clipboard, your emoticon keyboard, the keyboard settings, or our handwriting keyboard, which will transcribe what we handwrite. So for example, It's pretty forgiving and it's fairly fast. You can see it had no trouble recognizing the punctuation and my horrible handwriting. Now this keyboard has improved since I last used it. So I have this little cursor I can drag and drop around. So if I need to make an edit, I can drag and drop it, add a space, write another word in here like short. See if it recognizes it. Pretty good here, I can add a space. And then I can also cross it out to delete it if I want or just use the delete key down here. Or if I want to change this word, I can just write over it like trial. Now, needless to say, there are tons of options for the S Pen Stylus under Advanced Features and S Pen. I'm not going to go through all of them because most of them are pretty familiar, such as Air View. So if you hover the tip of the pen over certain features like your calendar, your photo gallery, you'll get a little pop-up preview. It also works with links. You can also scroll through your uh, website uh, using the S Pen Stylus. We also have Direct Pen Input. So if you want to handwrite your text into text boxes, you have this option, which again, you can turn on and off. So just to show you how this works, if you go to the Chrome browser, or hover the tip of the pen over a text box here, you can actually go ahead and start handwriting this in instead. So if I write cnn.com, it should recognize it. There we go. We also have our detachment option. So when you eject the S Pen, it automatically pops out Air Command by default, but instead you could have it create a note or just do nothing at all. So when it comes to the main home screen interface, they have made some changes here in terms of the designs. Although the layout is pretty familiar, the icon pack and the colors are more consistent. So the icons are more rounded and the colors are a little more even and not quite as stark and bright. Now, if you swipe to the right, we get to Flipboard Briefing, which is our news aggregator. So we've seen this before uh, and you can modify this. So you can turn off certain feeds. So if you don't want business news you can turn that off and of course you can go up to settings to either turn this off or turn it back on so if you turn this off it disappears from your home screen and you won't see that panel anymore of course you can also modify the home screens by pinching in and out so if you want to turn on flipboard briefing that way you can you can select your home screen by selecting the home icon above each screen and you can remove them or rearrange them we also have our wallpapers and we have lots of wallpapers to pick from we have some recommended wallpapers you can download or you can go with the ones that have come pre-installed with your device and there's lots of them and they do have some motion effects. So if I go ahead and select this, you can apply it to the home screen here. And then you have the option to turn on the motion effect, which is actually off by default. Let's set wallpaper here. And it's a pretty subtle effect. So you can see when the device moves around here, the wallpaper sort of moves with it. Now for some of these wallpapers, the motion effect on the lock screen is actually different than the home screen. So you can see with this particular wallpaper, this actually color shifts as you move it around. Now you're not just limited to wallpaper, so you can theme out your entire interface. So we have wallpapers, themes, and icons. So you can select different icon packs. You have to download those from the store and there's lots of them to look at. Or you can just select themes, which will change everything from the fonts, the sound profile, wallpapers, and the icon pack. And there's a lot to pick from and some of them are paid and some of them are free. Uh, so if you wanna select one of these, you can go ahead and download it 
So for example, you have a gold phone, this might be the perfect one for you. We also have our widget interface, so you can cycle through all your available widgets, and then we have our screen grid. So 5x5 five five is default, but if you want a more spacious one, you can go with 4x4 four four or 4x5. Four now one of the ways of creating a more consistent looking UI design is by applying frames to all of the apps so they look like the rest of the system apps. So for example, the third party apps are either rounded off or they've applied these frames around them. And you can turn this off if you don't like it. You have to go to settings, go to display, go Go to our icon frames and select icons only, click done. And then we're back to the original design. Now they've also tweaked the folder layout. So when you click on the folder, it expands out to this full screen view and you have these tab views you can cycle through. You can also add apps from your app selection here. So it makes it kind of easy. You don't have to drag and drop to the app folder. You can also change the color of the folder, which is nothing new here, but again, the interface is a bit different. So if you want your Google folder to be green, you can go ahead and select that. And of course you can also rename it as well. Now when it comes to moving apps around here, you can drag and drop them between the different home pages, but they also give you this landing strip. So if you tuck your icons up here, you can do this with multiple icons as well. You can tuck them up into this strip up here and then move to the home screen you want to drag and drop them to, which is kind of a handy feature. So when it comes to the app drawer, many of the apps have already been rearranged into folders for us. You can tap on those, rename them, color them a different color, and then you can see that in order to add different apps to those folders, you actually have to drag and drop them. You can't add it right from the folder itself. So you have to go up to edit and drag and drop the apps to those folders or just drag and drop them over each other to create new folders. Now for apps that you can uninstall or disable, you get a minus sign here. And in most cases, you can only disable them. But for apps I've installed, I can go ahead and uninstall them. But for the rest of the apps, there's system apps that you can't uninstall. We're going to click done, but you can rearrange them from A to Z. This keeps the folders up top and rearranges the rest of them into their alphabet. So getting to our drop down notification shade, you can see down below we have all of our notifications in addition to clear all and our notification settings. So if you want to limit what notifications are being pushed, that's a quick way of accessing them, which is very nice to have from the drop down shade. More interesting is all the new toggles up top and the change in the interface design. So instead of scrolling left to right, you now expand out to this grid view. And for the most part, all of them are visible. But there is one feature not visible. And if you want to get to it, you have to tap and hold to get to your editor. So now I can drag and drop our icons around. So you can see do not disturb is not up there by default. So I can drag and drop this up here if I want, but it does displace one of the others. So I'm going to leave it as default and click done. And we're going to take a look at some of these. So again, the interface design has changed and you get this little arrow down below some of them, which allows you to quickly access some of the features without leaving the drop down shade. So for example, I have my different sound profiles. I also have power saving measures I can quickly turn on. So I have mid or max. And then I have other things like a flashlight level. So I can change the brightness of the LED flash along the back with this little scroller, which is very nice to have. We also get our display brightness in addition to an auto mode and you can search the device here. So this is our universal search that allows us to search the device for apps emails or whatever. So for example, if I just search for Android, this brings up all the hits related to either Android from applications, settings, or even a web search. You can also limit your search with a variety of filters from the type of item to the timeline. You also notice up top we have scan for nearby devices. So this allows us to quickly connect to nearby devices. So for example, my printer, a TV set or something like that. So if you want to broadcast your media or just send a print job, you can see those devices connected nearby. Now the only problem with this tap and hold to edit interface is that you now have to go to the drop down shade to get to more settings to jump to the settings panel for that specific feature. Also making an appearance for the first time on a Samsung device is this blue light filter. So this strips away the blue light, which is supposed to help you with your circadian rhythm. So the blue light doesn't disrupt your sleep pattern and you can change the opacity or just turn it off. You can also jump to more settings and schedule this if you want. So we can select sunset to sunrise. So this automatically kicks in and you can customize the schedule if you want with start and end time. You can also quickly turn on and turn off your always on display from here as well. And then you have device visibility. So basically this allows the device to be discoverable with other devices on your network, such as your TV or your printer. Now in terms of the recent apps viewer, we have our card view and you can see it's very smooth and quick. We have close all down below. And then you can see for certain apps, you have this little double bar indicating that those apps can be opened up side by side for a split view. So for example, I can open up Instagram on one side and then I can select another app compatible down here like YouTube. 
So there we go. We have our side-by-side -side windows, which we can resize. And for the window highlighted in blue, when you tap on that circle icon, we can act upon that. So for example, I can copy items from this window to post it into another window. I can minimize the window or I can maximize that window or just close it out. So for example, if I minimize the window, this pops it out into this little badge view. So this stays hovering in the background. If I want to access it, I can tap on it to expand it out again. And now we have a floating window view. So I can move this around or resize it. But if I want to maximize this, let's go and maximize this to full screen and swipe down again from the corner, I have this window view again. So that's one way of accessing that feature as well. So only certain apps support it. Uh, it. It does work on Instagram, but not all apps will support it. So again, I have these multiple windows I can resize. And then when I press the home button, they again turn into these floating badges, which stay present and I can continue interacting with the interface and jump back to them when I need them. Now I can have five of these apps open at the same time. And if I have all these apps open, if I hit the home button, this minimizes them into these badge views, which I can move around. Now if I tap and hold on these, I can go up to remove to close them out. Now, if you don't want to dig through your recent apps to start the split screen mode, just tap and hold on the recent apps button and this takes you to your split screen selector. So I can select Instagram and YouTube the same way. Now, when it comes to power saving, there's a lot going on here. So they've added quite a few features and completely changed this interface. So as you can see, when I select it, it tells me exactly what it's going to do to improve battery life and by how much. So if I apply this recipe, it adds two hours and three minutes to my estimated battery life. So you can see one of the things it's gonna do is change the screen resolution to full HD. So that's the first time I've seen this on a Samsung phone. So let's go ahead and apply this just to show you what happens when it goes through this process. So you can see it's adding to my estimated battery life and it's changing the screen resolution and doing a few other things in the background as it's explaining down below. So we have two modes we can select from mid and max. So with mid, we can customize this as well. So you can customize the maximum brightness, change the screen resolution all the way down to 720p HD, limit device performance, and prevent background network usage in this mode here. We also have the max mode, which replaces ultra power saving mode. So you can see that this will dramatically dial back performance, screen resolution, and many of the features of this phone. You can see exactly what it's going to do. And you can customize this as well. So you have a lot more customization options than you did with the ultra power saving mode. And you can see that this dramatically improves battery life. Adds about 17 hours and 26 minutes to battery life. So we're going to click apply. So there we go. We basically have limp home mode. The idea here is to maximize battery life for essential functions like your phone dialer, messaging, internet browsing, and of course settings. You can add a few other apps, but you're limited to a certain number of apps in this mode. You have your notifications down here as well. And if you want to turn this off, you can go and turn this off. Another new feature is secure folder, which replaces private mode. So secure folder is protected behind the password, your iris, scan or your fingerprint scan. So this is where you can lock down apps, images, documents, that sort of thing. Uh, so you can add apps here. So for example, if I want to add Hangouts, I can go ahead and do that. Now that doesn't mean that those apps are removed from the home screen. It just means that when you access the apps within the secure folder, they're sandboxed. So that means if I log into Instagram, I'm only logged into Instagram under the secure folder. So there's an extra layer of protection. So I can still go to my home screen here. So if I swipe over to social, you'll see that I have Instagram. Instagram, which is logged out right now on the home screen, but I can jump right back to my secure folder to access it this way. So again, just an extra layer of protection. Now, if you're within a secured app, you'll see this little green key icon in the lower right corner. So that means when I go to open up this app, I actually have to use secure folder login to authenticate. Now, very similar to private mode, you can also add images or documents to the secure folder as well. You just go up to the options up here and go to move to secure folder and that removes it from the gallery so you can no longer see it. So if you want to access it now, you have to go back to secure folder, go to the gallery app and you can see that image right there. And if you want to remove it, just go up to remove from secure folder. So as always, one of the best ways of discovering the device's capabilities is to dig into settings and they have redesigned the settings panel here. It's much simpler. It's one long list and that's about all. You can also search for whatever you want here. So just type in your search or jump to your previous searches takes you right to it. So under connections, if we go to Wi-Fi, we do have a feature under advanced called smart network switch. We've seen this before, but this allows you to turn it on and off. Uh, there's a few tweaks here. So we have aggressive switching or normal switching. So again, the switches between cellular and Wi-Fi, depending on the strength of each network. 
Next up we have sounds and of course there are plenty of options under sounds to calibrate from your vibration patterns to your ringtones to your keypad sounds to even the sound the device makes when you connect a power supply. But what I want to dig into here is sound quality and effects which is kind of buried but basically this is our equalizer. This allows us to calibrate the device audio to our preferences. We also have some other enhanced profiles such as UHQ Upscaler, Surround and Tube Amp Pro as well as Concert Hall. We also have Adapt Sound so this will actually calibrate your audio to your headphones and to your ears. So basically this will play a variety of tones at different frequencies and all I have to do is take this little quiz to calibrate for your ears and your headphones and then you can save that specific profile for a specific set of headphones. Now I've been here a few times already but display still has a few things to take a look at here such as content scaling. So you're prompted when you set up the device to pick this large or small so you can go back and change this if you want. I went with large here because I think it films better. Uh, but we also have our easy mode. So if you want the grandma mode enabled here you can go and select that, click done. You can also select which apps you want to load in easy mode. Let's click done here. Uh, relaunches and you can see a much more simplified interface with bigger icons and an emphasis toward your contacts. We can also turn on our LED indicator for our notifications. We can also keep our screen turned off if it detects it's in a pocket or a bag. We do have smart stay so this is a feature we can turn on and off. Uh, so basically it's tracking for the location of your eye so it knows whether you're looking at the device or not so it doesn't go to sleep when you don't want it to. We also get this catch-all category called advanced features. There's actually quite a bit in here, such as our S Pen settings, but we also have one-handed operation, so you can turn this on or off. It's actually off by default. But if you want to reduce your screen size, you just triple press the home button, and then you can cycle between the left hand and right hand side and return to your full screen if you want. We also have one-handed input, and that works with the keyboard. So for example, if I go to the Samsung Notes here, I now have this uh, right justified or left justified keyboard. This also works with the calculator and phone dialer. So we have plenty of other features we can turn on and off, such as the quick launch camera and the pop-up view gesture. So again, for apps that are compatible with it, you can minimize apps into window views. We also have palm swipe capture. So this is a feature we've seen before. You just swipe across the screen with your palm to take a screen grab. But we also have scroll capture, which works with scrolling websites particularly well. So if I go to Chrome here, I have a scrolling website and I want to capture more of this than just the first page swipe across the screen. And then we have scroll capture. So this will build it out as we scroll through the page here. So you just continue building it and you can see along the right side here it builds out and when you're done you can click done. We also have direct call. So if you're looking at a text message or a contact if you raise the phone to your ear it automatically dials them up. We also have smart alert. So if you have a pending notification the phone will vibrate when you pick it up. We also get easy mute. So if you're receiving a phone call or an alarm is going off, just face the phone flat on a table to mute it or just palm it with your hand. Now with SOS messages, if you triple press the power button, you can send an emergency message to an assigned contact. And this will send pictures taken from the rear facing and front facing camera automatically and record a five second audio clip and send it along as well. But of course you have to set this up ahead of time so you have to remember that that's here. We also have this video enhancer which brings HDR video to this device. So again, you have to turn this on or off and this works with only certain apps that push video like YouTube, Google Play, and Video Player. We also get a new section here called Device Maintenance, and this will scan our device and give us a health report. So right now, 97 out of 100 means I'm in good shape right now. And I can click Optimize, and this will optimize the system for better performance in terms of processor performance, battery performance, or whatever. But you can also see I have several sections down here, such as battery. So this is my battery manager, so I can see my power saving measures, I can see what apps are taking up the most battery life, and I can see my battery usage as well. I also have my storage information, so you can see what is taking up all my storage, and how much I have left. I can also clean out my storage right now if I want. It runs the clean up process, clears it out for me. We also have our RAM usage, so you can see what is taking up our RAM and how much RAM is currently in usage. And of course, I can also clean that up right now as well. Next up, let's check out the camera app, which launches very fast. And the camera app has been redesigned. You'll notice that we have these three dots down below, which indicates that we have three pages to swipe across. So if you swipe to the right, we get to our modes, swipe to the left, and we get to our filters. You can also switch between the front-facing and rear-facing camera by swiping across the screen. Of course, we get lots of settings as well. So we have our picture size. So I've gone with uh, 9.1 because it's cropped to 16 by 9. Otherwise, you can go up to 12 megapixels at 4 by 3. We also get our video resolution, so we have Ultra HD or Quad HD, which is the resolution of the display. We do have tracking autofocus, so if the subject is moving and you focused on the subject, this will continue tracking it no matter where it goes. We also have shape correction, which will correct distortion in pictures automatically. 
We also get a feature called motion photos. So when you snap a photograph, this will record three second video clips alongside that photograph. This is very similar to live photo, although it doesn't include audio. We also get voice control once again, so you can command the camera remotely, such as saying, shoot, record video. While recording video, you can see that we can pinch in and out to zoom, pause it, take a photograph, or just stop it. Now you see you're limited to 10 minutes at a time when you're recording in 4K. Now in terms of tracking all the focus, if you tap on a subject, you can see it will follow that subject no matter where the camera goes and maintain focus and exposure on that subject. And when you're taking the photograph, just tap and hold and you can take a burst shot. So checking out these modes to the left, we do have pro mode, which allows us to manually control just about everything. And you can see how many metering points we have on here as well. So we have our autofocusing, so we can select our focus manually, white balance. Uh, we also have our filters, exposure, our aperture, and our ISO levels. We also have our metering mode. So we have matrix, center weighted, or spot. And then we also have our AF area. So either multi or center focused. Now we have plenty of other modes from panorama to slow motion hyperlapse. We have selective focus, which allows us to focus the subject in the foreground and blur the background or vice versa. We also have live broadcast which allows us to broadcast video right to YouTube from our device without going to the YouTube app. Now for those S Voice fans out there that is still here and it's still the only voice assistant that can be activated from the lock screen. Hi Galaxy. What's the weather tomorrow? Saturday expect thunder showers. So the Galaxy Note 7 is the ultimate flagship smartphone. It has the most features of any smartphone today and one of the best designs with one of the best displays and camera systems. And of course, it has tons of software features, which makes it a fun phone to play with, especially if you really love technology as much as I do. So this is definitely a fun phone to have and I really enjoy exploring its capabilities. Of course, it's not perfect. There are a few things that could use improvements like the speed of the fingerprint sensor, the sound quality of the waterproof loudspeaker, and the software experience could be sped up a bit. But of course, it's a very expensive smartphone, $850. So that's a significant price premium over the Galaxy S7 Edge, which has many of the same specs. So really you're just paying for the larger display, the S Pen stylus, the iris scanner, and the larger battery, which might improve your battery performance overall. And ultimately with waterproofing, wireless charging, and just all the other awesome features that are available in the Note 7, definitely think this is a phone to look at if you're looking at the best smartphone today. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this look at the Galaxy Note 7. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and I'll see you again in the next video.